Hi, my name is Julius Koivistoinen. Welcome to Mitigrade. In this video, I'll show you how to set it up, I'll tell you what it is, and I'll demonstrate how to use it. So let's get to it. I've got Mitigrade open here on the left side of your screen, and on the right, I brought in Intex Studios BU16, and here's the EN16 MIDI controllers. Once I've plugged them in, I can now navigate into MIDI input device drop down menu in MIDI grid, and I'll simply select this set of controllers here. Underneath, you can see a second drop down menu. This shows all of the available screen resolutions, and MIDI grid selects your currently active resolution automatically. Next, we define how DaVinci Resolve is set up on our system. These numbers here refer to the version, and then you choose between studio or free depending on whether you're using the paid or free version. Select dual screen if you have that setting enabled in DaVinci Resolve's workspace menu. And this last option here refers to the bottom menu bar in DaVinci Resolve. You can have it in its default state, you can use icons only, or you can hide the page navigation altogether if you want to. And those are the most crucial settings you have to apply before starting to use MidiGrade. In the settings menu you can find more advanced customization options. Auto Start will open MIDI Grid on your operating system boot up. Focus Mode means that MIDI Grid is enabled only when DaVinci Resolve is selected. Enable Keyboard makes it possible for you to use your keyboard and mouse instead or adjacent to a controller. By selecting User Menu, you gain access to a menu which has 16 extra adjustments, which you can then customize using Adjust Coordinates. There will be more about this feature in a separate video. Swap Lift and Gain swaps the positions of those two adjustments. Target Second Monitor is for the users who have primary display set to their second monitor. And selecting Dolby Vision lets you access a menu where all of the Dolby Vision trims are in DaVinci Resolve. Now you can see these five options named Preset and they are separate from the others. These are related to the keyboard shortcuts and you can select the one you use in DaVinci Resolve. If you plan on using the keyboard functionality, I recommend using the preset called MIDI Grid. Adjust Coordinates opens a window where you can customize all of the functions triggered by knob turns, button presses, and keyboard keys. And MIDI Settings lets you further customize the selection of MIDI devices, for example, if you want to use multiple controllers at once. That was a quick rundown of all of the MIDI Grid settings. If there's anything unclear, I recommend going to Help, which will open the user manual, and there's plenty of information there. Speaking of which, if we scroll down in this document, we can find all of the layouts used by default. So let's hop in into our first demo with MIDI Grade 5. So exciting. So while you watch me doing that, let me tell you about MIDI Grade. It is a fast, enjoyable, and intuitive way to color grade in DaVinci Resolve. With the use of physical buttons, knobs and keys, you can control your mouse movement and most commonly used functions with ease, develop efficient muscle memory, and thus concentrate on what is most important, your resulting image. I'm a cinematographer first, and I recognize how important it is to do sophisticated and accurate and beautiful color work because that is what really elevates the footage in the end. So this little big invention came into existence in 2015 from my own need for an ergonomic and efficient user experience while I was doing grading. I released the first version of MIDI Grade in 2016, and that was just a Mac OS based, very simple plugin, and it was for DaVinci Resolve 12. So this has been around for a while, but it lacked many crucial color grading features and little by little, and thanks to continuous stream of user feedback and support, an extensive list of new features has been added into MIDI Grid. Now, just recently, MIDI Grid has reached its fifth major release, and there's been so many iterations over the years. Now, there's a whopping 180 different DaVinci Resolve functions inside. One of the major differences from MIDI Grid 4 to 5 was the addition of a lot of customization, and also now it's just so much more robust and reliable in use. Now you can see the device I'm using is the EN16 and BU16 connected together, but that's actually not the 
original way, I guess. MIDI Fighter Twister was the only available hardware option for MIDI Grid in the beginning. Later, I added keyboard functionality, and that's like the ultimate minimalist setup, which is really cool. I'm, I'm making another video about that as well. In 2021, support for X-Touch Mini controller was developed, and that's a more affordable controller option. And finally, 2024, MIDI Grade has reached maturity and is now effectively controller agnostic. So this means that the choice of the controller is actually yours. It's not limited to a specific brand or a specific model. And in fact, it doesn't even have to be a physical controller at all. So as long as you can output MIDI notes from a device or a piece of software into MIDI Grade, you can access all of the countless features it offers. In fact, there's a lot going on under the hood. So MIDI Grid works on both Windows and Mac OS, and you can use such a vast range of different controllers, but effectively what it's giving you is over 16,000 individually hand input coordinates, which together cover the selected screen resolutions, and then you can also customize them if you want. But this alone should give you an idea of the amount of planning and dedication that has gone into putting this tool set together. After all of these years of development, the core principle has stayed the same. My goal is to offer you a premium level controller solution, which I enjoy using myself. So no matter if you're just starting out or you're already an established professional, MidiGrade offers you a unique color grading experience on DaVinci Resolve, or for that matter, even on a different software which I'll also be covering on a separate video. As you can already see here, there's not just one way to achieve a certain task using MIDI Grid, and that's by design. There's a wide range of different kinds of workflows by different people, and that's something I've tried to address here. You've seen me toggle between different menus here, and as I do that, the functions of different knobs changes. But I don't necessarily have to do the menu selecting using the MIDI Fighter Twister like I've done here, but I can actually enable keyboard and use keyboard instead if I want to. And it goes even a step further if you decide to customize your own controller based on the instructions in the user menu in chapter performing actions with MIDI notes. That means that if you trigger a specific function using specific MIDI CC, that selects the menu for you so you can actually mix and match different functions from different menus if you wish to do so. So I hope this has given you an overview of what MIDI Grid is and what it potentially can do. You've seen me use grid controllers and the twister which are natively supported by MIDI Grid, but also the Arturia beat step in this instance which isn't. So hopefully this inspires you enough to try MIDI Grid yourself. If you have any questions or concerns, head over to the Discord server. I'm trying to build a community there so that if I'm not available for any support questions, other users can help you. And MidiGrade already has users worldwide on every single continent. So it's just very interesting to hear what's your background and how you use it on your daily practice. So thanks for sticking around and I hope to see you on the next one. Bye.